What is up YouTube? So today I'm not at the Surfside Jetty. Um, I'm actually at home at the Jetty Man headquarters. And you know, sheepshead season, it's here. It has begun. Um, I went out yesterday and we didn't get many. We only got three keepers. My dad got two, I got one. So I'm not gonna make a video about yesterday because not enough fish for me to make a video. But I will make a video about the setup and tips and tricks that you need to know so you can have a successful season this year. And the season has just begun, so don't worry. Actually, um, right now is not even the best time. So I'm gonna explain everything that you need to know. And I'm gonna tell you what's the best time, what's the worst time, and how to catch them. Everything you need to know exactly, down to the teeth. And if you think I didn't get anything, let me know down in the comments below. All right, so I'm gonna start by talking about the season, you know, the sheep's season, what's the best time, uh, what time of year, whatever. So we are in November, mid-November, and from mid-November all the way to mid-April is when you can expect to reliably catch sheep's it when you go out to the jetties, to the piers, wherever you go, really, they're gonna be everywhere. They're gonna be infested and you cannot get away from them, um, especially from mid-February to mid-April. If you throw shrimp in the water, you're gonna catch nothing but sheep's it. So some people want that, some people don't. I know that at first it's all fun and games, but then you get a little burnt out and it's happened to me. It happens to most of my friends that fish the jetties. Everybody's all hyped because the sheepshead are great fish. Don't get me wrong. I love catching sheepshead. But when you catch maybe over like 300 fish, you're like a little like, <laughs> is there something else swimming in here? Maybe like some specks or something else? No, it's all sheepshead. But yeah, you're, you're, you know, the season has just begun. Everybody's trying to catch these fish. And I'm gonna break it down from November, mid-November to mid-February. So this is November, December, January, and a little bit of February. This is probably the slowest time of year for sheep sit. So it's gonna be harder to find them. You're gonna have to move a lot. You're gonna have to move all over the jetty. You're gonna have to cast, close, far, everywhere. And you might catch a fish. You might get a limit, but not very often. Um, what's probably gonna happen is you're probably gonna catch one fish, and then you're gonna catch another fish like in a different spot and another fish in a different spot. And maybe if you get lucky and uh, you go on a really good day, you just, hey, you can catch a limit in one spot, but that's probably gonna set you up for failure. So if you wanna have success from mid-November to mid-February, make sure you move, okay? Don't be stationary. Don't just go and set camp and fish one spot. Move, look around, try different rocks, cast close to the rocks, cast far from the rocks, cast deep. Move your bobber stopper five feet up, five feet down, you know, move around, try different things. And only the only thing you should never change is the bait. Okay, guys, sheep sit only eat shrimp. Well, not only shrimp, they eat crabs and crustaceans, but reliably only shrimp. So I'm gonna show you guys a few clips and I want you to ignore me losing the fish, but focus on where I'm fishing in every clip. Oh my God, that's something big, dude. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's a huge sheep sit, dude. No way, bro. That is huge, dude. No, he came off, bro. Got one. Nice. Let's go. No, dude, I cannot catch a fish. Oh my God. That's a big fish. That's a big fish, dude. And that's what I mean by move around. Every fish I hooked was in a different and spot. he came off. So then you're probably asking yourself, well, Jetty, man, you told me move around, around the Jetty, around the pier from November to mid-February. What about February to mid-April? Well, this time of year is when fishing for sheep's it is just ridiculous, okay? You're gonna catch a limit every time, okay? It doesn't matter if it's windy. It doesn't matter if the water's dirty. It doesn't matter if it's the most blue water you have ever seen, you're gonna catch a limit. The sheep sit there in this time of year are just, just by the millions. And the best, best, best time of year, hands down to limit on sheep sit every time you go to the jetty is spring break. That week is just insane. If you don't believe me, check out some of my videos. Another thing actually just came into my mind, the sheep set regulation guys, make sure you follow it. Um, wardens go to the jetty very often, more than people think. If you're fishing the Gaveston Pier, there's wardens everywhere. And you shouldn't do it because it's the law. 
you should do it because when you poach or keep fish that are not in regulation, you're stealing from other people. So make sure you follow the regulations and the regulations are 15 inches and up, five fish per person, per day. Gee, Jenny man, what setup should I use? And let's talk about that now. So I'm gonna break it down to setups and rigs. So I'm gonna talk about the setup first, the rod and reel you should use for sheep sit. So I use uh, different rods, different reels. Um, I have, you know, you've probably seen this guy in the, in the, in the videos, the Shimano Stella with the Tika 9'6 light. Uh, this is, you cannot go wrong with this setup, but I'm gonna give you a better setup that I think is more uh, realistic for most people. So the Tika rod is great. It's a little expensive though. I remember Tika used to be like $80. Now I think they're like 150 or something on Amazon. It's pretty ridiculous. So if you wanna get yourself a Tika, go for it. But I have a better alternative. The Okuma Cecilio 9'6 light. This thing is, I am so impressed by the performance of this rod. And I've only had it for less than a year. No, it's like, it hasn't been much time, okay? It's a pretty new rod, but I am really excited to fish the sheep set season with this rod. So now I will tell you, this rod is very light, okay? Not in weight, but in power. It's very light in weight too, but especially in power. If you don't want a really, really bendy rod that you, 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 like, you cannot lift sheep set up with this rod, okay? So sheep sit that are gonna be keeper size, cannot be lifted, you're gonna have to net them to get them up into the jetty. Unless you walk up to them, which I do not recommend. This time of year is very wet, very slippery. So I'd recommend you get yourself a net man, you know, somebody that can help you with the net. If you're fishing at the end though, if you're fishing more in the middle, you can walk down a little bit safer. So be careful though, anyways. So yeah, this rod is very light. So it's gonna bend a lot and you can see in some of my videos, it bends a lot. So you're not looking for a bendy rod, maybe consider the Tika because the Tika does have a stronger backbone. You can lift pretty big fish. Uh, my buddy Charlie lifts some crazy fish. Man, he, he lifts up sheep's it like I think 17 inches. He lifts them up with the rod. I wouldn't do it. I just don't want to snap it, but he does it. So it's possible, you know? And then the real I recommend you get is either the Shimano Vanford 5000, the one I have, or the Shimano Spheros 5000. I don't have the Spheros 5000, but it's, I have the Spheros 10,000, and I am blown away by the performance of that reel. I could go down into every little detail why that reel is just magnificent, but, you know, just take my word for it. You can't go wrong with the Spheros 5000. Make sure it's the new model though, not the old model. Um, so yeah, the setup, that I think is the most fun and you know I would I want I'm gonna be fishing for the season is gonna be the Van Ford um, 5000 and the Okuma Cecilio 9.6 and I will also be fishing the Stella with the teacup because I'm gonna explain something right now if you notice the difference in between these real obviously besides being different is that this one has mono and this one has braid and it's on purpose so when you're fishing a bobber stopper if you use braid it's going to slip and I've never heard anybody talk about this and I always was struggling why is my bobber stopper not working and it's because I was using braid don't use braid do not use braid with a bobber stopper it's not going to work it's going to slip and you're not gonna have success you're gonna have a horrible day you're gonna have to retie a million times trust me it's happened to me so don't do it with a bobber stopper you can fish at the end you can fish different depths and you can find the fish better but sometimes the fish don't want the bobber stopper presentation they want a more natural presentation now if you're worried i will show how to set up a bobber stopper here shortly um, but first let's talk about this so fish sometimes don't like the bobber stopper presentation they want a more you know free free floating shrimp and that's when you need braid. So what I do is I get a little bit like, you know, it's like 10 inches to a small bobber. Small bobbers are key for sheep's head fishing. They don't like the weight. So a lot of times you're gonna see the bobber start sinking just a little bit and that's a sheep's head feeling your shrimp. And if you have a big bobber, they're gonna feel that resistance and let go immediately. So small, tiny little bobber is best. Attached to a three-way swivel, which it will be attached to your main line. So it should be attached to your main line. Um, does your main line have to be braid? No, it can be mono. But I like, the, you know, mono feels different. If you never fish mono, it's stretchy, feels different. So I like both. Uh, they both have their perks. 
Han was cheap, Brave is pretty strong. So yeah, this sometimes the fish just want this type of presentation. I'm also gonna share how to set it up here soon. But yeah, sometimes that's what they want, and that's what you gotta give the fish. Now let's talk about hooks. And I see a lot of pretty good anglers make this mistake. They don't realize how essential hooks are. Hooks are so important in sheepshead fishing. You want to use a tiny size for a J hook. I don't care what brand, I don't care what you get it from. Just make sure it's a small, tiny little J hook. Don't use a circle hook. Don't use a treble hook. Don't use any other type of hook. Only a J hook. Sheepshead are not going to get gut hooked often. It's very rare that you gut hook a sheepshead. So you're not, you don't have to worry about it hurting them or anything. So J hook is going to give you the most possibility to, I don't even think you can hook a sheepshead with a circle hook. They have no lips. So how are you going to hook it inside of the mouth? It's, I don't know. Use a J hook. Save yourself trouble. Use a J hook. You're going to have so much more success. All right. So these are the two main setups that you're going to be using at the jetty. Um, I mean, I really hope the GoPro can pick this up, but these are going to be the main two setups for the sheepshead. Okay. We got the slip cork and we have the more like free line jetty cork type thing. So the jetty cork type thing is just remember small bobbers are essential. You're going to have your small bobber and then around like eight to eight inches to a foot of just regular line attached to a three way swivel and attached to your main line. Obviously your main line is probably going to be a lot longer than this. This is just to show you guys and it's going to be attached to a small J hook and then you're probably going to want to fish seven to eight feet and a small swivel. I'm sorry, a small split shot so you can keep your shrimp more suspended, but you don't want a big split shot that's going to keep your shrimp straight down. You want to have like a floating presentation, if you know what I mean. And then this is attached to your main line and that's how you, this is the one of the top, top setups that I use for sheep sheepshead. You can also just attach the line straight down here, but I like this presentation because it gives it a more natural presentation because there's less weight on the shrimp and when a sheepshead bites, it's not going to feel the bobber as much because your bobber is going to be like this and then when the sheepshead bites, it's going to move. So the you know, the sheepshead is not going to feel the whole bobber. You're going you're gonna to just go like that and then you're going to realize, hey, there's a fish on my thing that's going to start moving down and that's when you set the hook. So yeah, this is probably one of the best setups out there. And then it comes to bobber stopper. I fish the bobber stopper a lot too, but it's a little bit harder to get right. So um, your main line should be mono, like I explained, and you should know why. Now you're gonna have a bobber stopper at the top, a slip cork. I lost my last slip cork yesterday. This is not a slip cork, but you get the idea, right? And then and then you're gonna have another bobber stopper, and then you're gonna have your weight. So you don't want to put your weight here. Um, before your bobber stopper, you want to put it after. So if you get snagged, the goal is to break it off around here. You lose the weight, but you keep the bobber, which is what takes the longest to set up. But yeah, so you get the idea, right? To splish, I'm sorry, to swivel, and then the swivel is going to be attached to your hook with a little bit of leader. The leader should be like eight to twelve inches. Um, so yeah, that's the slip cork. That's how simple it is. That's how it works and. You should pretty much be set for sheepshead fishing this season. So now I'm going to show you the non-bobber stopper setup in action. The one that's with the free line. It looks more natural and gives the shrimp a better presentation. There it is. Got one. Oh, dude, this is pretty heavy. Wow, dude, that's a pretty big one. Yeah. Yeah, I get the net. It's a big sheep sit. This is a giant, bro. Be careful. Holy crap. Oh, wow, bro. No! Dude, that's a big one, bro. Yeah. Jeez. Holy crap, bro. 20 again? 20 again? Dude. 
Holy shit! Oh. That is a jab! It's 21! Bro! That's my second big one of the season, bro! That is a jab! Let's go, dude! Wow! <laughs> now I'm gonna show you a clip using the bobber stopper all the way at the end, which is a really hard spot. But it's pretty interesting how this turns out. There it is. That's a fish. There it is. Finally, dude. Oh, that's a good one, dude. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. But he's in the worst spot possible again. And he's right next to that rock. I, I can see my line right next to that rock. This thing is heavy, dude. Oh no, he's going right into the rocks, man. What the hell, look at that. That fish is going right into the rocks. I think he got me on a rock actually. This is why you fish mono, man. Mono is so much better than braid. Resistant wise towards the rocks. Oh my goodness, I am shaking. Oh shoot. He's right there. He's right there. That's a good, dude, that's a really good sheep's head. Oh my God, I need the net. Oh. He's right there. Careful. Oh man. Ooh. Let's go, dude. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> bro, after I lost so many fish, man. Oh Where's my it? god, bro. That's a good one, too. He was right right on top of the rocks. Need a rock. All right, that should be all for sheepshead fishing this season. That should be everything you should know. Um, if there's anything I didn't catch or didn't say, didn't talk about, let me know down below in the comments and I'll reply to you. And yeah, just so you know guys, I have plenty of videos catching a lot of sheep's head. I'll leave them down link below so you can go check them out. Fishing with the exact same setups that I'm using and describing here and talk to you guys about. So I'm gonna leave down the link below so you can go watch those videos. And also, um, yeah, make sure, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and show support to this video. And if you want me to do another one just like this for the net, for whatever species, Comment down what species you want me to talk about. If you guys enjoyed this type of video where I just sit down and talk about the species and everything you need to know to catch them, let me know that below. And make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. If this video does well, I'll be making more videos like this. So thank you all for watching and good luck out there.